Welcome to the Trade Scores help video on measuring performance in the TradeScores.com trading challenges. In this video, I will discuss how the trade scores are calculated and also how the rankings are determined for the Trade Scores leaderboard in any of the challenges. Here on TradeScores.com in the Trade Tracker, you can see the trade scores for every trade that has been made. Now I'm currently on the current tab. These are trades that are open, but it is also possible to look at historic trades in the closed tab and again the trade scores that were earned in that particular challenge. Now if we go to the trading challenge tab, we can also see the leaderboard and there is a ranking there. You can see in first place is myself, a number of trades in the calculation 19 and the average trade score is 31. Now in this video I'll explain not only how the trade scores are calculated but how you rank on the leaderboard will also be explained. The trade score calculation is based on two components. The percentage gain for hold period is worth 50 points and the reward you earn for the risk you take is also worth 50 points. Now we add up each of these scores for a maximum possible trade score of 100 points. Now the first thing that we need to calculate is the percentage gain in consideration of the hold period. Now percentage gain is relatively simple. How much did your position change in percentage terms? But we must multiply that by an annualization factor to get the total percentage gain. For example, if the stock that you trade earned a gain of 14% in 12 days, looking up the hold period on the annualization factor table reveals a multiplier of 8. 14% times 8 is a total gain of 112%. Now the percentage gain and hold period are shown in the trade tracker. Percentage gain is under PERF for performance. You can see that there's a number of different percentage gains in that table. And then the next column over is the hold period. So taking those two values, we use that lookup table, which can be found in the Trading Challenge How to Play document under measuring performance. And so I've gone into the how to play document. I go down to the bottom of the page here and there you can see that annualization factor table where we can pull those values out. Now once we have our percentage gain for the hold period amount we can then look up that value in another table found in the how to play document. 112 percent earns 29 points out of 50 which you can look up in this table and you can see here we have percentage return from and to, so we want to look up 112 percent. So between 112 and 116 percent earns a score of 29. Anytime that you're wondering what the number of points earned for the percentage gain for hold period, just go to the how to play document and look it up in this table. The second component of the trade score is the reward for risk calculation. The reward of a trade is the difference between the entry price and the exit price. The risk of the trade is the difference between the entry and the stop loss price. So for example, a stock bought at $10 with a stop at $9, which is then exited at $14, has a reward for risk of 4. The risk of the trade is $10 minus $9, that's $1 and the reward of the trade is $14 minus $10 for a reward of 4. The reward for risk, 4 to 1 or 4. Now we can then jump over to the how to play document and look up the value 4 here in the reward for risk table. We go down, a reward for risk of 4 earns 20 points. Now the total trade score is calculated by simply adding the score for percentage gain for hold period with the reward for risk score. This will give you a maximum score out of 100. Now once you start to accumulate a multiple of trades, you begin to move up the leaderboard for the overall trade score ranking. Now there are two methods for calculating the average trade score. If you are playing a specific trading challenge with a limited playing period, for example a game that runs for two or three months, then we take a simple average of all trades made in the challenge. However, if you are playing the ongoing trade scores challenge, which does not have an end date, then we have to expire trades over time 
and really factor in the most relevant trades for your overall trade score ranking. The player with the highest average trade score will always sit on the top of the leaderboard. How the ranking is calculated is relevant to the type of game being played. A game with a specific end date will simply use an average of all trades. The ongoing trade scores trading challenge will only include the trades that are relevant to the challenge. We expire trades using a formula discussed in the How to Play document. If you go to the How to Play document for the trade scores challenge at the bottom under measuring performance, you will see how the rankings are calculated. Essentially, we include trades in the average if the closed trades have not expired, and we include open trades that have a hold period that is longer than the average hold period of closed trades. How trades expire is shown here in the How to Play document. For example, a trade with a hold period of 5 days or less will expire 20 days after its exit date. You can see all of the details in the How to Play document under the Trade Scores Challenge. Ultimately, the trades you make will determine your ranking in the game. You can always find out where you are on the leaderboard by simply looking in the right column on the Trading Challenge scoreboard page. Your particular ranking will be highlighted in yellow on the leaderboard. In addition, you can see some performance relative to the community on this page and some of your statistics for how you've been trading in the game. Well, that has been the Trade Scores Help video on measuring performance. I encourage you to visit the How to Play document on Tradescores.com and review the specific rules relevant to the game that you are playing. I hope you have fun with Tradescores.com and trade well.